family was getting ready to move houses when the young daughter's beloved doll, Mary, was accidentally thrown away. The girl was extremely sad and wept to her parents. It's okay, we'll buy you a new doll, they said, and the girl unwillingly accepted. As she got used to her life in a new place, the girl eventually forgot about Mary-san. Then one night, she got a call at home. Her parents hadn't returned yet, so she answered. Hello? Hello? Who is this? It's Mary-san. I'm in the rubbish. Huh? The phone hung up. Mary? That was the name of the doll she lost. She put it down to a prank call, but it still bothered her. Then the phone rang again. Although she thought it might be the same prank caller, it might also have been her parents, so she picked up the phone. Hello? Mum? It's Mary-san. I'm at the station now. The phone hung up again. That station. It was near her house. For a prank call, something sure was strange, the girl began to think. Then the phone rang again. It's got to be Mary-san again, the girl thought but she convinced herself it might be her mother and picked up the receiver. Hello? Mum? Is that you? Come home, quick! This is Mary-san. I'm in front of... The phone hung up. She was in front of a shop near the girl's house. It was then the girl realised that the perpetrator of the prank calls was gradually getting closer. An indescribable fear began to gnaw away at her heart. I'm in danger, she thought. She picked up the phone to call her mother's cell, but at the same time the phone rang, causing her to answer it accidentally. Yes? This is Mary-san. I'm in front of your house now. The phone hung up. The girl trembled with fear. She was standing in front of her house. She pulled the phone line out of the wall and peered outside. There was nobody there. There was just a dim light cast over the road from the street lights. Unable to stand it any longer, the girl checked the front door was locked, then went to run upstairs to lock herself in her room. But then the phone rang. The same phone she'd pulled out of the wall. There was no way it could ring. No idea what was going on, and her fear and anger laid bare. The girl picked up the phone. Who is this? Stop it this instant! This is Mary-san. I'm right behind you now. Hello, and welcome to Toshiden. Exploring Japanese Urban Legends. I'm your host, Tara A. Devlin, and on this show we'll be looking at different urban legends from Japan, how they came about, and, when possible, the truth behind them. Last week was our very first episode, featuring Kuchisake Onna, so if you haven't listened to that one yet, please feel free to go and check it out. And just a reminder, 
that you can get early access to both this show and our sister podcast, Kowabana, True Japanese Scary Stories from Around the Internet, over at our Patreon. If you would like to support the show and help me provide the best possible content I can, you can head over to koabana.net to find out more. We're actually halfway to our goal this month of commissioning a new Hashaku-sama design for the store and website. So if you'd like to help out, head on over and check it out. Now, on this week's show, we're going to be looking at a couple of different legends that all fall under the same category. Cursed phone calls. The legend I introduced at the start of the show is called Mary-san, and she's perhaps the most famous of all cursed phone calls. Mary-san, or as she's sometimes spelled, Mary-san, is a popular Japanese urban legend that ends with the line, I'm right behind you now. This, along with the building dread of Mary-san getting closer and closer, has made it an extremely popular story, as it's left to the imagination what might have happened after the ending. This ambiguity has also led to several variations of the story over the years, however. While the body of the story itself tends to remain the same no matter where you go, here are a few variations you might find on the ending. For example, the girl being murdered when she turns around. The girl getting stabbed, although her death is left up in the air. The setting is sometimes changed to an apartment building, where the calls get closer to her floor each time. Sometimes it's a taxi driver of a hit and run, and he receives calls from the person he hit, someone named Mary. In other cases, the caller is a Rika-chan doll, and not Mary-san. And sometimes it's said that if you don't tell five people of this story after hearing it, Mary-san will call you next. But that's not all. There are also several comical variations on the ending, where Mary-san doesn't quite get her way. These are as follows. The girl ignores the fact that Mary-san is behind her, and witnesses can see the doll following her, half crying. The girl lives on the 147th floor of a skyscraper. Rather than taking the elevator, Mary-san takes the stairs, stopping to call and catch her breath on each floor. By the time she reaches the 147th floor, she passes out. Mary-san accidentally goes right past the girl. A few years later, she gets a call from Mary saying she's in Russia now. Mary-san is unable to open the door, so calls once again to plead for the girl to open it. Being an automated lock system, however, she's unable to. In the case of someone getting on the train right as Mary-san calls, she's left behind on the platform, chasing after the train and shouting, I'll find you, no matter what! like an old-fashioned romance tale. If someone is leaning against the wall, or sitting in a chair against the wall when she calls, she'll plead to be led out, or otherwise be crushed. There's a version where Mary-san takes the Osaka Railway, changing trains as she gets closer. However, due to the complex nature of the network, she gets lost, and can't find her way out. There are also versions of this for the Tokyo Shinjuku subway. Mary-san gets the wrong house, letting the girl know she's in front of her apartment, when the girl lives in a single-storey house. And, on her way to see the girl, Mary forgets what she was doing, and goes sightseeing instead. 
So supposing Mary-san actually calls you, how are you supposed to deal with her? This is actually pretty simple. Number one, don't answer the phone. Number two, place your back to the wall. Number three, make sure the house is locked. Number four, even if she does appear behind you, don't turn around. And number five, before she gets behind you, get behind her. So these are the basics of the legend, variations you'll find on the original and how you're supposed to deal with Mary-san because every good urban legend needs a way to deal with its monster. But how did the legend come about in the first place? One of the first things you might be wondering after hearing this story is why Mary? Mary isn't a Japanese name. So why is there an urban legend featuring a doll with that name when Japan already has a wealth of famous homemade dolls itself? There are even variations of the story where it is indeed a Rika-chan doll and not Mary-san. Who created the story of Mary-san's phone call is to this date unknown, but over the years, people have surmised that perhaps she was based on a real person. That person was Yokohama Mary. After the Second World War, Japan faced great hardships, and many people found it difficult to feed themselves. A lot of women turned to prostitution, and one of them was Yokohama Mary. She was an elderly lady who painted her face entirely white and wore frilly dresses, just like a doll. Mary was often seen standing on a particular street corner in Yokohama, like a part of the local scenery. She drew widespread attention in the 80s, when the media did several reports of the strange people you could find living in Tokyo. She then disappeared in the 90s, although it later came to light that she had moved into a senior citizen's home and then passed away in 2005. A woman named Mary who wore frilly dresses and painted her makeup to resemble a doll. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? It's not impossible to think that someone created a scary story about this woman back in the day, which spread through word of mouth and morphed into the legend of Mary San's phone call today. Now, putting Mary San aside for a second, Let's take a look at another cursed phone call legend. This one's called Kaijin Answer. Everyone, have you ever heard of Kaijin Answer? Kaijin Answer is a yokai who will answer whatever question you ask, and you can easily summon him via your cell phone. First, you need 10 people to form a circle. Then, the first person needs to call the second person on their phone. Then the second person the third, the third person the fourth, and so on. Repeat until the tenth person calls the first. Because everyone should be calling the person next to them at the same time, the phones should be busy. The phones will instead be put through to Kaijin answer, and he will answer any question you have for him. He will answer nine questions from the ten, no matter what is asked. But in return, he will ask one person a question himself. That question will be incredibly difficult and near impossible to answer. For example, what day will September 1st, 12,825 be? Supposing you cannot answer, 
or give the wrong answer, a hand will appear from your phone screen to steal away a piece of your body. For you see, Kaijin answer was born deformed as only a head. By collecting body parts in this way, we can perhaps assume that he is attempting to become a complete human. So, who is this guy? Kaijin answer was first circulated on various urban legend websites around August 10th, 2002. Before long, it became such a hot topic that it even made its way to TV, spreading the story even further when the presenters attempted to contact Kaijin answer in a filmed experiment. About a year later, it came to light that the story was actually the creation of a single person. A webmaster by the name of Hiroshi-san, who at the time ran a website on modern ghost stories, did some investigating and traced the story back to an author going by the name of Kunerizu Aidi-san, who detailed on their own website how they created the story. It seemed this person wanted to see how stories were distributed throughout the internet and successfully crafted a story to diffuse throughout the most popular urban legend sites. The writing style of each story was slightly different to the last, while keeping the content mostly the same, making it seem as though it was posted by several people. It was through this story that a lot of people realised for the first time just how easy it is to use the internet to spread false information. Before the internet, there was a limit as to how far a single person could spread a story. But as they saw with this legend, it was now easy for just one person to instantaneously send a story to thousands, if not millions, of people at once. But it doesn't end there. In the same year, another cursed phone call legend appeared. One that seemed to marry all the key elements from both Mary-san and Kaijin answer. This one was called Satoru-kun. Supposing there was a way to find out anything you wanted, would you try it? Just by using the public phone, Satoru-kun will answer any question you have. It's so simple that anyone can do it, so you should definitely give it a try. You'll need three things. A 10 yen coin, a cell phone, and a public phone. The 10 yen coin is for the public phone. A telephone card or different coin is no good. It must be a 10 yen coin and nothing else. First, find a public phone and put in the 10 yen coin. Call your own cell from it. Then, once you get through, turn towards the receiver and say the following. Satoru-kun. Satoru-kun, please come. Satoru-kun, if you're there, please reply. You must make sure not to mess up even a single word. Next, once you've finished the chant, hang up the receiver and end the call. Turn your cell phone off as well. Once you have done this, you'll receive a call from Satoru-kun within the next 24 hours. But Satoru-kun won't call you just once. He will call several times, but you won't be able to question him just yet. Instead, Satoru-kun will tell you his current location. For example, I'm in so-and-so elementary school. Or, 
I'm in such and such park. Each time he calls, these locations will get closer and closer until finally he calls to let you know I'm right behind you. At this point, you may ask him your question, but there is something you must be careful of. That is, you must, under no circumstances, turn around. If you do, or if you don't ask your question, Satoru-kun will snatch you away. It is said that you may only ask Satoru-kun a single question, but he can correctly answer anything, even from the distant future. With this story, we see what is basically the end product of what Kaijin Ansa and Mary-san were trying to achieve. Kaijin Ansa will answer whatever question you have, while Mary-san, a doll thrown away by her owner, will call at regular intervals to inform you of where she is, until finally she appears right behind you. If Kaijin Ansa married Mary-san, their child would be Satoru-kun. This is one of the most notable characteristics of the Satoru-kun legend. It's thought this particular urban legend was specifically adapted from the above two in order to spread even further and become more widely known. The number of public phones has been decreasing in recent years, however, so it's becoming more and more difficult for people to try it out for themselves. But that's not all. Elements of Satoru-kun are also thought to be based off the game of Kokkuri-san. When playing Kokkuri-san, the Japanese version of the Ouija board, players also use a 10-yen coin and ask questions for Kokkuri-san to answer. Is it any surprise that Satoru-kun became so popular when he took all of these elements from other well-established stories? But who is Satoru-kun exactly? Kaijin Ansa is said to be a deformed yokai that was born with only a head, now going around gathering parts to build the rest of his body. Mary-san is a discarded doll. Yet Satoru-kun is wrapped in mystery. It is unknown if he is a yokai or spirit, or even how old he is. All we know is that the majority of people who call Satoru-kun are presumably spirited away. And that brings us to the end of this week's show. If you have any comments, questions, or requests, you can contact me at koabana.net or over on Twitter or Facebook. I love hearing from you guys and your thoughts on the show. And don't forget that if you're looking for even more Japanese horror, you can check out Koabana Volume 3 on Amazon for over 80 exclusively translated stories. Or you can join our Patreon for early access to the Toshiden and Koabana podcasts each week, as well as special bonus episodes. Head over to koabana.net for more right now. Thanks, guys. And I'll see you again next time for even more Toshiden, exploring Japanese urban legends. Want even more scary stories? Head over to koabana.net for new translations every week. You can also join our Patreon for exclusive stories you won't find anywhere else. Head over to koabana.net now.